Thank you. This is Jay, Janet, Harrington. Jay comes from, is living at the moment in... Schenectady, New York. Schenectady. Tell us what life has been like for you oh. before you came to the Welcome Home Initiative. Oh, before I came here, um, I was very bitter. I was mad at God. I felt um, because of everything I've gone through, the abuse as a child, the rapes, um, the military, and the rapes in the military, I didn't think there was a God. Um, I thought he forgot about me, that I deserved everything that I got. And uh, then I came here to uh, the first time uh, three years ago. And uh, you guys opened my eyes and showed me that God is with me all the time. And, and, and then I went ahead and I opened my heart. And um, now my mind is open and, and Jesus is in my life and I can go and testify to everybody out in the street or everybody out that I know and, and, and be able to help and minister to others that what Jesus has done for me. And if he could do it for me, he could do it for anyone. Thank you. What service were you in? I was in the uh, U.S. Air Force, 1985 to 1989. Um, it was active duty, and then um, 1989 to 1993, inactive reserve. What, um, what, how did being in the military change your life? Uh, I thought that I was going to be able to serve my country and... And, and be safe. Unfortunately, some things happened. But uh, if I had to do it all again, I would do it again. Um, I would just do it different. I would tell them what happened to me. And uh, it has made me be responsible, dependable, and all the beautiful things that they teach us to be. Um, and of course, I would still do it, do it again. Uh, just I would say more about what happened to me and not let them make me hide it. You probably wouldn't want to go back to some of the places you've been in since leaving. No, some of them, not, no. But <laughs> Saudi Arabia was hot. Uh, but, um, I'm thinking about in this country as well. And there <laughs> as well. Um, I wouldn't want to go to where I was stationed at or where I went to school at, but I would still do it over again. Yeah. It, was, it was a beautiful experience. God has given Jay a wonderful gift of being able to, of art, really. She loves art. Uh, most of the time during the sessions, she has sat and she's been coloring uh, from a book and so on. And she did a picture, which unfortunately, unless I don't think we've got here with us today. Um, is, it, is it in your, yeah. Lindsay is going to frame this picture and the picture is a visual depiction of what Lindsay felt she's been through not Lindsay Jay I'm sorry uh, felt as she went through the retreats she's been on we're going to get it framed and with Deacon Marion's and Reuben's permission we're going to put it on that wall in the healing center as you go up the stairs uh, and Jay is going to put a little bit of explanation with it and we're going to type it up as a testimony to what God has done in your life. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Praise God. Give me a hug. You are a precious child of God and a precious daughter of the King. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much, Jay. Thank you. I'd like to hear somebody else as well. Somebody else in our group gave a wonderful testimony yesterday during our group time, and I'd love her to come and just tell you about the healing she's had through the Welcome Home Initiative. Sharon, would you come up, please? <laughs> Get all no, but I'm, I'm very confident you'll give a good account of yourself. <laughs> I'm going to hold this. <laughs> well, that makes me even more anxious. 
Sharon, can you remember when you first came here on a retreat? When I first came here, I was suicidal every single day of the week. Um, I was a mess. I probably showed up here with rope. <laughs> I'm probably. probably Do you think we probably? Got that yeah. Lecture when we first got here about things. <laughs> um, I was just. Um, I. I was just. I was prey, and people were predators, and and it was totally true. People could tell, and uh, they got me. Um, I. I was raped in the in the Air Force by a lieutenant. I didn't talk about it because of several reasons. Um, it, it was, um, it was, you know, and, and, um, and you guys know, um, so, um, I was also a first responder at the Oklahoma City bombing, and I held a lot of guilt about that, um, like, um, you know, I just held a lot of guilt. I had a lot of shame, is what it was. I had a lot of shame, and, um. When I came to the Welcome Home Initiative, I started getting some healing. Um, it wasn't like a big boom, and it didn't. It started here because people started to pray. Some of the the heavy spirits that were laid on me that that I couldn't get rid of on my own because I didn't a know that they were on me. You know, I didn't know that there was a spirit of suicide in the first place, um, and, you know, spirit of depressions, you know, all the, all the things that come on you, um, and, um, so we started at that point, and we started with just expressing what was going on, and then, uh, you know, from there, um, you know, I got involved in some things, um, some counseling, um, I've been going through the vet center in Albany, they've been very helpful, and, um, you know, what you, would you like you to know? <laughs> suddenly, yesterday, in the middle of our session, you gave a little testimony of what God's done for you and how he healed you. Oh, with... Um, from, from the... Well, I was in a... From the Oklahoma I was in a peaceful... I was in a, um, a Tuesday service, which is called a... A healing service. A healing service. <laughs> <laughs> the Tuesday service. <laughs> the Tuesday service. And, um, and it was Christmas-ish time, and um, whoever was preaching that day asked us to stand up and hold the baby Jesus. And, um, and I stood up and I held the baby Jesus, but it turned into a baby from Oklahoma City bombing. And uh, I guess everybody else must have sat down. My eyes were closed. I stayed standing. The baby Jesus turned into a baby from Oklahoma City, and uh, which is something I had a very difficult time with um, in my in my existence since the Oklahoma City bombing. And um, and I was able to come to a resolution with Jesus. I w I was able to put him in the situation, you know, where we're supposed to put Jesus in the trauma. Mm -hmm. And um, and probably 20 minutes into it, nobody nobody came to me and said, "Sit down now, Sharon." And um, and I was quiet. And um, and I I came to the revelation that Jesus came and took those children before they felt any pain or heard a big explosion. He knew who was going to go and he knew who was going to stay, and he took them. And um, they went in peace. You know, survival is pain, but I think I think Jesus took them in peace. How, so how, that's given me how, a lot of um, resolution. A lot of resolution. Yeah. So he gave you peace as well. Mm -hmm. Plus forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just forgiveness of people in my life with all all the things that have happened. Just forgiveness. This made a huge difference in my healing. Just, yeah. Just so you know, forgiveness and following it with boundaries. You can't you can't have forgiveness for people without following it with boundaries. I've learned that along the way, just for what it's worth. Sharon, thank you very much indeed. I'm just going to pray now that Sharon has had a, a cancer removed just recently. I just pray that this will be fully healed. 
it will fully heal, you know, this in terms of the turn skin white. and your looks and everything. The scars turn white. Yeah. And we just pray that in Jesus' name. And we thank God for what he's done in your life over the last few years in Jesus' name as well. Amen. Thanks, Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much. These are powerful testimonies. So, Linda, we've got several Lindas on this call, on this retreat. This is Linda W. Would you come up and... <coughs> I'm going to stand on the carpet because the sound works best that way. But Tell us who you are and what you, where you served and what you did. Uh, I'm Linda Willoughby. I'm from Scotia, New York, my whole life. I served in uh, the Army when I was 18 and um, I spent some time in North Carolina, came back home, was in the Army Guard in an ambulance unit, and uh, then I became a nurse. I was an LPM, went back to school, got my RN, and the Army had no space. So somebody said, go to the R Air Force. It's right in Scotia. So I transferred over to the Air Force and um, became a flight nurse. We were, our unit was deployed to Saudi Arabia in the Gulf War in um, <clears throat> 25 miles south of the Kuwait border. And we were the last hard air field before um, the Kuwait, which actually only forward infantry people went to. So we had Major Gray or somebody from Britain come. That was a big thing. And, um, but we were a, um, a massive, which is uh, a mobile air staging facility. So people would, injured people would be treated at the Navy hospital. There was a thousand bed hospital there. And then we would uh, get them ready for flight to send them out. And, but luckily there was not a lot of casualties during that war and during you know, when we first started out in Riyadh, we had Scud missiles and, and the threat of um, nerve agents and anthrax and all that kind of things. And we moved up the, the coast. And then the ground war started where you were, the ground trembled and the booms in the sky and, and whatnot. And you could, um, then they were coming, this big cloud of dust. It looked like in the cowboy movies when the horses were coming. This big cloud of dust, so everybody was ready. Why, with my 38 with six bullets in it? Because we were only to defend ourselves. We weren't combatants. And basically what they did was they were waving these little tickets that said, we will give you food and shelter and whatnot of all these poor bedraggled people who were supposed to be the enemy, and they were starved to death. He had no water, they had no clothes. A lot had shrapnel wounds and what, so they came in and we were put them in the tent and tried to render first aid to them, but they didn't speak English and we didn't speak, you know, whatever, Saudi Arabian or whatever, Iraqi. And then they said, oh, don't touch them, they could be booby-trapped, so. Basically, they all were removed as prisoners of war, and that kind of was the end of our campaign because we were just to liberate Kuwait, and then we went home, but there was a lot of, um, you know, just uncertainty and whatnot. And then I went back and I was a flight nurse for a 19-year service, and uh, went to missions, but I never ended up going to uh, the North Pole of Greenland, which I wanted to, but they didn't have budgets for that, so. We just usually flew around the flagpole where we went to Bangor, Maine and came home, but left Scotia, flew around or even down to West Point and back, but then you landed at Scotia, so that is... When did you f retire fully from the military? When did I? When? Yeah. In 1998. 1998, oh, thank you. Um, how did you find out about Waco Home Initiative? What brought you here? Why did you come? My sister, Missy. Who I've known since a child. I was married to her brother for a while. I'm not anymore, but um, so she um, has come here for several years, and she um, has seen a lot, seen a lot of growth in her. And she has been trying to get me to come here. And I have childcare issues, so this is the first year I've actually been able to have somebody watch my little grandson, who I have custody of, and uh, could come and and have enjoyed it and feel immensely blessed to have attended. Thank you, Missy. Thank you, Missy. Yeah. One of the great things we found with the um, retreat that although we put advert, ad, adverts out all over the place, the main reason why people come 
to these retreats is because someone else brought them or told them about it. So thank you, Missy. You did a great job there. You're going home now. You feel better? You feel any changes? Oh, yeah. I feel a little rest and rejuvenation from all my kids and my grandkids and my husband <laughs> going, the big joke is going, Linda, 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 because that's all they... <laughs> Linda, 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 my husband, and mommy, mommy, mommy. So grandma, mom, mom, they call me. So mom, mom, there's always that. So um, yeah, there's a little little break in that. It's very nice. Always giving. Yes. Always giving out. Yeah, well, okay. thank you for coming, and thank you very, thank much. You very much. Thank you very much.